All right. Well, guys, let's just jump in. Well, Father God, I do thank you, Lord, today. I thank you for what you've done for us. And Lord, I just, what a privilege to be able to get into the Word with people again. And Lord, may this touch lives. May this be something to um, bring us into a greater understanding. And I thank you, Lord, for all that you're doing. That, Lord, we know that you are not social distancing. You are with us. And Lord, we are totally able to be in your presence. And, and love you and Lord may this be something that we would get a real grip on the truth of what this is saying and we just give you the glory in Jesus name Amen Amen alright well the presents today we are going to be doing number five of five this is the last one of this series and we're going to be talking about getting down in his face kind of a fascinating deal as we've been talking about the presence and this thing started quite a while back but two weeks ago we had lesson number four and that was the one where we started the Greek word enopion and enopion means in the face of and it's getting closer and closer understanding how the presence of God really works it was a step up from the word before him we and we'll show the different levels as we go along today we'll do a rerun over all of them but it started off with going about the presence then it went before him then it went before his face and then it's now was in his face last week um, which is kind of to us is a bad expression culturally I got in his face yeah you know <laughs> all that well this is a little bit different than that this is um, a whole bunch different actually because this is about doing something that's wonderful in 1 Corinthians 1 28 through 29 it says this and God chose the lowborn of the world and the despised and the things that are not so that he might bring to nothing the things that are so that no flesh might boast in his face it says in our translations might not boast in his presence but it takes it that extra step further to have somebody actually standing in the face of Jesus and boasting um, I have a real hard time with that the word boasting um, some of the translations you have is the Greek uh, says it then might glory in his face um, the Greek word kalkomai is not doxa doxa is glory kalkomai is very simple it means to boast to brag it's not about glory and so the reason they use the word glory is that I would glorify myself I am so wonderful I'm glorifying myself and I can get the picture I get the idea but the idea about boasting and bragging and doing so right in the face of Jesus kinda well that kinda scares me I, I think it should scare just about everybody it takes real ignorance to boast in his face but I've seen people do it and um, you know they get all you can't tell me what to do I'm gonna do whatever I want to. I don't care if Jesus is standing right here I'm gonna do what yeah okay yeah fine I, I get that but um, I think there should be a little bit more of the fear of Jehovah um, that's my contention in Hebrews 413 we had seen it said and there is no creature unrevealed before his in his face unrevealed before him it it's a closer level than just unrevealed before him to have us unrevealed in his face and then it says but all things are naked and laid open to his eyes to whom is our account Lee, yes no one can see your PowerPoint why not did you remember to share your screen maybe not <laughs> so let me let me just go back and do that. How's that sound? That's that's a that's a marvelous idea. I absolutely approve. Okay, you're just like that, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that that look better? Oh, that's much better. Uh, except you got to actually get into presentation there. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Clicking on everything I can. Would you hurry up and click <laughs> on the button? <laughs> <sir>? Okay. <laughs> and they wonder why I worry about you people. Okay. I got to move that out of the way. Now we're good. Now we're good. Are you good? Okay. 
There is no creature unrevealed in His face, but all things are naked and laid open to His eyes, with whom is our account. This says it all. There is no creature unrevealed in His face. All things are naked and laid open to His eyes. Talk about it's right there in His presence. His scrutiny is extreme and it is focused. Um, this is kind of the big deal. We were just talking about this. We were watching a church service um, this morning and they were talking about we just feel like we want to get the presence of God in this room and it was again the idea that we do things to get religious enough that, that the presence of God would be able to come into the room. And I, that, guys, that's just absolutely the wrong direction. Um, everything is in His presence and everything is totally revealed right there in front of His face. We are always in His presence. Uh, I just, so to me it's kind of a fascinating deal. We don't have to have three fast songs and two slow songs before we get into the presence of God. He was in the presence during praise practice and long before we ever tuned the instruments. Okay? We had better be in His presence before we walk in the room with our instruments. There's got to be so much more there um, to be in His presence all the time. To do what we are doing because we are in His presence changes how it should be done. Um, not to try to gain His presence but to know we already have it. It's already there. What are we doing in front of Him to open our understanding to how much we are exposed before Him? But we also need to know that it's done in absolute love. Um, all things are naked and laid open to His eyes. Yeah, that would scare us if it wasn't for the fact that we know that God is love. And He's already paid for all the stuff that would make us so we could get burned up in His presence to be absolutely blasted. Our sin would be blasted. No, that, we don't have any. When we're standing before Him in our spirit, we are free, clear, clean. He's washed away our sin. Not just covered it, washed it totally away. But it's all done in absolute love. Absolute love. Totally exposed. Life or death is in His hands. Man, if this was just something that we really got, if we just got the revelation of this, uh, it would be so much better for us. Totally exposed. James 4, um, 9 through 10 says, Be distressed and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy into shame. Be humbled before the Lord and He will exalt you. Be humbled in the face of the Lord and He will exalt you. People say, well, I thought we're supposed to have joy and I thought we're supposed to be laughing and, and all this. Well, not at the beginning of repentance. Not at the time when we start looking and finding what our sin looks like. There's things we need to be distressed about and mourn and weep. We need to turn our, our false, selfish laughter into mourning and our joy, our false selfish joy into shame. To be humbled in the very face of the Lord. And what will He do? He will exalt you. Uh, guys, this, is, this sounds so negative until you get to that part where it says, and He will exalt you. Uh, God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. Uh, if you'll humble yourself in the eyes of the Lord, He will lift you up. This is a fascinating thing, but this all happens in His presence, and we don't have to talk Him. Don't have to talk Him into coming. He's already there. It's it's the other way around. He has to talk us into coming into His presence. He has to talk us into thinking about Him. He's always there. We don't have to come into His presence. He's there already. Uh, no matter what you're doing, you're doing the dishes, taking a shower. Uh, Cleaning the car, uh, yelling at the kids, uh, you know, bothering the wife. Jesus is still right there. The Father is still in the presence. He's in the room. It's us getting that. Trying to explain this to guys who are who are dealing with porn to realize that you know that when you clicked on stuff, Jesus was right there with you, right? That you're doing this 
in His presence. It's not like, well, He's in church and when I get my act together, I'll get together and then I get the presence of God back in my face and, and then I can act rightly. But as long as God's not here, I can do whatever I want. Boy, is that the wrong idea. It's absolutely back the other direction. So realistically, you're not trying to cultivate His presence, but rather you're cultivating your awareness of His presence. That is perfect. That is absolutely right. So part of the thing that we need to be working on is our discerning so we can see what is really truly going on in the spirit realm. And this is where it starts, is be distressed. Get rid of the false stuff, be humble before the Lord, and have Him exalt us. Uh, Roxy and I were talking about this today. I don't think we have a clue what it would be like if we just saw in the spirit realm around us. Um, if we could see that, even if we could see, oh, let's say a 10%, uh, no, it's more than we could handle. 1%, uh, yeah, I don't, you know, I, just, I think we don't get it on how much stuff is happening around us. And um, pretty amazing, uh, pretty amazing. True humbling. We can do nothing for salvation, but He has done everything for it. His exaltation brings real laughter and real joy. Now, this is what turns this thing around. Let your false stuff be turned into shame and mourning so that it can be real stuff that's made to us. Real laughter is so much more fun than just uh, telling dirty jokes and watching people laugh. That's a different thing. Uh, the joy of everybody laughing at a party and just they're all just having fun and that's joy. Yeah, no. Uh, when you experience the real joy in the presence of Jesus, all of a sudden all the parties just don't make as much sense anymore. Mm -hmm. So it's just like everyone says, man, I just want to have a good time. Really? Then let's worship. And they all go, you're out of your mind. Yes, I am. And it's okay. I like it. Okay. In his face. Scrutiny taken to a much higher level. Intimacy and interaction with the Lord. Intimacy. Being in his face. Working with him. Having this amazing interaction with him. It's way beyond we are not alone. I know it sounds like something out of a sci-fi movie. But... Folks, we are not alone and are never alone um, if we would ever understand this completely. I think people like um, uh, Richard Wormbrand knew it. Even in his prison cell every night when they tortured him and they dropped him in his prison cell, Jesus was there with him every night, healed him so that he was able to take yeah, torture the next day. So uh, uh, he was there in the room while he was being tortured. It was just, he had an understanding of the presence of God. It matters to the Lord concerning, to, concerning us. It matters to Him concerning whether we are running out of toilet paper. Okay? It matters to Him whether we have vegetables or, or not. Okay, really, you say, oh, that's, that's just being silly. No, no, it's not. He is concerned with uh, everything about our lives, and He's there to be part of us. And if, if we can praise Him through it all, if we can interact with Him through it all, it's amazing what can come to us. Um, it's just a beautiful thing. It matters to Him. He wants us closer than we've ever thought about being. May we truly want to be in His face, wanting to be right there. So... There's my end of review. Yeah, end of review. Now we get to jump into the new stuff. Yay! Here we go. Presence. Amen. We started with the Greek word parousia in the presence, and this one, uh, when I started finding out where that was in the scripture, it kind of blew my mind. Is how often we are trying to do ministry in His presence. It's always about being in His presence. I'm loving it. I'm just loving that part. Then I realized there's, it goes on from there. We went to the Greek word emprosthen, and it means before. One just being in his presence, then being before him. It shows a little bit more of a focus on what we're doing. Then the next word was prosopon, 
and it means before the face of. Actually brings the face involved there. Before the face of. Well, then last week was enopion, in the face. In the face of a person. Okay, each is progressively more intimate. Can you see how that works? In the presence, before, before the face of, in the face of. Okay, it just keeps getting closer and closer and just more intensely focused. Well, we aren't done. Each are personal and it gets much more closely involved. The next word, though, paints even a more complete picture. It's the one step further than what we have had. And that is the, we saw Enopion last week. Well, in the face of someone, complete attention. But the Greek prefix kata means down. And then every time the word, not every time, I'm sure there's exceptions, but most of the time when the word kata, it brings it from normal general into a very fine point. It brings it down. Um, to take things and just sets it. Boy, it's a beautiful, beautiful way of looking at things. Well, this word is katanopion, down in the face of. Now, it takes it from being in the face of to down in the face of. <laughs> uh, this is much more intimate. Um, extreme attention. The only thing happening is the interaction between Jesus and me right here. The only thing happening is me, between me and the Father right here, down in the face of it. There's nothing else going on. This is it. Huge. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 17. And we're going to hit every single instance that this word is in the scripture, and it's not there too often many times, but watch how this thing works. This is very, very beautiful. For we are not as the many peddling the word of God, but as of sincerity, but as of God, we speak in Christ down in the face of God. But as of God, we speak in Christ down in the face of God. We're not peddling anything. It's not, this is sincerity. It's, this is so much more. Folks, we're doing something, but we're speaking in Christ down in the face of God. We are doing what is important to Him. It changes our priorities. It doesn't matter what men think around us. It just doesn't matter. What is important is what Jesus is thinking, what the Father is thinking, what He's doing with things. We're not there to gain prestige or personal benefit. We're there to be in His presence, to be dead to self, to be alive to Him. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing. In Christ, down in the face of the Father, just intense personal Look. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 19. It says again, Do you think we are defending ourselves to you? Huh. We speak before God in Christ, but in all things for your building up, beloved. <laughs> but we speak... It's not about how, how we look to men. It's not about that. It's not defending ourselves before them. We know there is extreme scrutiny, but it's down in the face of God. We speak before God in Christ. We speak down in the face of Christ, of God in Christ, in all things for your building up. I hope you're starting to see how this, this language is like both of these these first ones are talking about we're talking about in Christ in God in Christ in God in the face down in the face of God in Christ um, getting the whole idea behind this in Christ who always takes us to the Father we always Jesus is always taking us to the Father that's his plan that's what he is doing but in Ephesians chapter 1, verses 3 through 4. Now, you all know Ephesians 1, 3 is, that's my verse. That's the one. And it, but it goes on. Here, watch this. Blessed is the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who blessed us in every spiritual blessing in the heavenlies in Christ. Now, there's a comma there, because it goes on. It says, even as He elected us in Him before the foundation of the world, for us to be holy and without blemish, before Him in love. What? 
He elected us in Him before the foundation of the world for us to be holy and without blemish down in His face. He wants us there. That's the goal of all of salvation, of the whole thing that He's done. He's blessed us with every spiritual blessing and elected us in Him so that we can be right there down in His face in love. I know I'm saying the exact same things over again, hoping to just re-emphasize this. He elected us to be there. That's what His goal is. That's what the plan has been from the beginning, is to get us right there down in the face of the Father. The determined, extreme relationship. He wants us closer to the Father than we've ever known possible. Than we've ever known. Um, you know, we've talked about this uh, with... Uh, um, Abram, okay, how close was he? He was a friend of God. You know, as close as Abraham was, and the beautiful things that Abram had seen um, with the making of the covenant and the sledding out of the pieces and seeing these things happen, and, and whew, even with all that, we are able to be closer to the very presence of God than he was. Amazing. You know, we talk about Jesus always takes us to the Father. Well, the Holy Spirit is making it so that we can be in the presence of all of them. He's changed us completely. Again, Rox and I were discussing that this morning, is that we don't get this about being indwelled by the Holy Spirit. Uh, the Holy Spirit in us, we, we talk about it, we say those words very flippantly. Um, that's an understanding, the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, we get it. Do we get it? I don't think we get it. Okay, how, how close are we to them? And yet how much He's done everything by putting the Holy Spirit in us to bring us closer to His face. Duh! Just amazing to me. Just amazing. Along with extreme redemption, okay, He redeemed us for us to be holy and without blemish down in His face in love. That's His plan. That's what He's done. And that's what His whole redemption work has accomplished. Totally amazing to me. Colossians chapter 1 verse 22. And you then being alienated and hostile in your mind by evil works. <laughs> What's a good beginning premise? Isn't that a good one? Well, I'll do that again. And you then being alienated and hostile in your mind by evil works. But now he reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and without blemish and irreproachable before Him. Whoops. Without blemish and irreproachable down in His face. With such extreme scrutiny, and yet what does He see? He sees us holy and without blemish and irreproachable down in His face. Wow. That's reconciliation, folks. That's, that's the way it works. Jesus always takes us to the Father. It's a completed work. You are so much more than you've given yourself credit to be. And because it's not you that did it, it's Him that did it, but who are you now? So much more than you think you are. Man, we're amazing. Why don't we get that? I don't think we're getting it because we're not wrapping our minds around how much He's done for us and who we really are in Him. We are so redeemed that we are able to stand in that presence in absolute scrutiny. So redeemed. That's a completed work of salvation. That's amazing to me. Just absolutely amazing. In Jude chapter 5, <laughs> I'm just seeing if anybody's paying attention out there. Okay, in Jude chapter 1, since there's only one chapter, we don't even need that. We can just say Jude 24. And then everybody try to be looking up chapter 24 of Jude. I Go for it. Anyway, Jude 1, 24 says, Now to him being able to keep you without stumbling and to set you down in the face of his glory without blemish, with unspeakable joy. Wow. Wow. Good now to Him being able to keep you without stumbling. Uh, it is within His capabilities to keep us. Man, all we have to do is agree with what He wants to do. Isn't that simple? He 
He has done all the work to accomplish all of this. And we are there, right in down in His face of His glory without blemish. Amazing to me. We still have, though, our free will in all of it. What makes this glorying so beautiful is when we choose to glorify Him. That's why we have a free will. It's so that we can glorify Him. We can choose Him. That's what makes this whole thing work. We choose Him. Okay, do I want to do porn? No. Why? I choose Him. I want to do alcohol? No. I want to choose Him. Do I want to do drugs? No. I want to choose Him. Every time we choose Him, we get closer and closer to Him. Not because He's far away, but because we can't see Him. We can't understand Him. And the more we choose Him, the more our eyes are open to who He is. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Down in His face. What an interesting expression, isn't it? Yeah. We have to do all the scripture, okay? Um, I know too many people that, that build their whole theology of a couple of scriptures and they just throw the rest of it away. No, we have to do all of this thing, okay? We have to cooperate with what he wants to do. What does he want? Okay? You sit and go, well, I don't, I don't want him to, I want to get too close to him because he's going to call me to Africa or, you know, call me to go do a Mother Teresa thing with the poor or something. <coughs> Maybe. But I'll tell you what he will do. He will do in you the work that's going to bring you closer to him. We have to cooperate with what he wants. That's the whole goal. We can walk opposite if we want. And we tend to. That's our tendency. But we don't have to. Our pride has been systematically killing us. The more we yield, the more we get. It's a good plan. Humility is the key. It's not about us. It's about us yielding to Him. What does He want to do? It's amazing how many statements we make about how pride-filled we are. Oh yeah? You're not, you can't do that to me. Oh yeah? yeah. But James 4, 9-10 through 10 says this. Be distressed and mourn and weep. We talked about this one before. Let your laughter be turned into mourning and your joy into shame. Be humbled in the face of the Lord and He will exalt you. And I know this is the Anopion. This is not Katanopion. This is the Anopion. But do we tell Him what to do? I think it's kind of interesting. Have we ever been mad at God or have judgments against Him? <laughs> I think the right crowd heard that one. So who is to obey whom? You know, who's in charge here? Have we ever told God no? I, it just amazes me. Uh, that has got to be the ultimate definition of insanity. Um, more than just doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. I think it's just absolutely insane to look at the Father God square in the face as we are down in His face and say, No, I'm in charge here. I'll do what I want to. I just, I just think that's the, the epitome of dumb. You know, this is uh, stupid gone to seed. First Peter 5, 6 says this, Then be humbled under the mighty hand of God that He may exalt you in due time. Nope, there's no word there for presence. I think just this is a major key though. Be humbled under the mighty hand of God that He may exalt you in due time. We must know our positions. We must know where we stand. The more we know His presence and intimacy, the better we are off. The more humble we should be. The more we see it, the more we should get it. We should be getting revelation and humbling more and more and more and more. Because that gives us more revelation and more revelation and more revelation and more revelation. More revelation. Makes it work. The more obedient we should be, the more we humble ourselves, the more obedient we should be. So knowing about the presence, we started with parousia, in the presence. We went to emprosthen, before Him. Then prosopon, before the face of. 
Then another step to enopion in the face. And finally, catenopion down in the face. The way I've been thinking about this is we have gone into the courts of heaven. We've talked about that. We've talked about going before the throne. Um, we've had to go before the, the law of Jesus Christ to have these things dealt with so that we would be able to go into his presence and into the courtroom. When you first walk into the courtroom, what are we doing? We are parousia. We are in his presence. He is everywhere. We are standing like with all the angels and all the saints and all the other people before him. Yeah, we're just like, yeah, we're there. And then we find ourselves actually before the face of where he's not just looking over to the east and to the west or whatever and but it's before his face we know that we're we're there and then it's a whole nother step to step closer and being in his face how much further is it there in the throne room of God to be down right in his face the presence of God is bigger than we are and it's a much deeper thing than we've ever given it credit to be because each one of these are personal and each one is more intimate than the one before it so knowing to be getting in his presence to be close to him every time I've done the courtroom of heaven as we've left the people who've been there have been changed I go, I don't understand how I've never been here before or how this is working. And folks, I don't think it's supposed to be something that is so rare we don't get it. I think it's something that should be commonplace but never taken for granted. Uh, doing that often to be understanding how to be in the presence of God and not be flippant about it. And we're not there to play tiddlywinks. We're there to do business and to worship and to whatever. Our minds register these words. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but intellectually, they are understandable. We understand these words. Yep, we're getting closer to yep, the presence. But the mind is extremely limited. The implications are staggering. Descriptions die in the telling. I don't want it to be something that we just talk about. I want it to be something that each of us experiences. To have the theology and have all the people I knew growing up call this positional theology, where it's our position in Christ. And finally came to my understanding that I want it to be experiential. I want to experience His presence. Uh, I've been... Every morning I, I get up and I, I see if it's going to be a pretty sunrise or not. Okay, Every sunrise is pretty because the sun's coming up. Praise God. But if there are some clouds and if there's some stuff and they start that beautiful rays of gorgeous reds and oranges and purples and yellows and this beautiful expansion of a sunrise or even a sunset, it blows my mind. I just... Uh, it is one of my fun things to stand out in the front yard and the paper's not here yet. Nobody's out, especially nowadays. And just sit there and just watch the sunrise. We used to do this up at the church up there, just standing out there by the gate and watch the sunrise over the property and watch it. Those are the times when I, I get there and I just know, okay, Lord, I'm in your presence. Doesn't matter where it is. There's no music. Oh, there's probably angels around singing their brains out somewhere, but I just know that it's just him and me. And I got that this morning again, and I just sat and just standing out there in my sweatshirt and pajama pants kind of thing, standing out in the driveway. Yeah, it's just who cares what man thinks about this point? I, it just doesn't matter. I'm in the presence. I took his presence with me. I was in his presence before I ever walked out to look at the sunrise. I had his presence with me as I was stumbling around in the dark. And, uh, I had his presence always with me, whether I acknowledge it, understand it, or not. 
He's always there. It requires experience. Cannot be manufactured. And I put that up there because that's what we in churches, even what we did up at um, Mountain Song, we did try to manufacture the presence of God. We tried to do whatever we could to bring His presence in. We kept finding out that the best we could do was to just humble and spend time in His presence because it's there. And the more people in the room who are spending time in His presence, the more we kind of built off each other and our frequencies started sinking. We started seeing, and that's when you start having these things and, wow, did you feel the presence of God there? And we've gotten this idea that, that's, that we manufacture that, and that's not what we're trying to do. The issue is for us to submit to it, to be part of it. This is what seeking His face is all about. We're not trying to seek it to see if we can find a place. We're not going to the mountains in Nepal to try to get to a guru to find. No. Seeking His face is me trying my hardest to get my views and my stupidity out of the road to seek His face because it's already here. It's time to decide what we are seeking and why. Acceptance? Are we seeking acceptance? Way too much. We know porn. We have guys that are, are seeking porn, alcohol, food, etc. Whatever, whatever the addiction, doesn't matter. What are we seeking? We've got to know that the only place we're going to get satisfied is in His presence. Now is a time for true self-examination. Who are we? What are we doing? This isn't time for us to do this corporately. This is perfect now that we're all having to be alone anyway. Be truly in His presence alone. Use this time to open up your discernment, to see your eyes opening, to experience His presence more and more. Now's the time for that very thing. It's time to seek His presence in depth. And that's what I've learned. That's what I've been pushing for. And that's the idea behind these, this little series of five words that bring us closer and closer and closer into intimacy. And I hope they make sense to you. Uh, don't just take my study for it. Get into your e-sword and check these words out. Check these things out. Uh, they're, they're worth it. They're very, very, very worth it. So, um, anyway, I don't know what else to say about it. I, I know this one, kind of a quick teaching today. I think it's enough. I think it's more than we can actually handle. And I want us to really be seeking God's face. So. Can I something? Yes? Um, so, the word picture that came to my mind in the understanding the down. Oops. I hit the wrong one. There we go. Is everybody still there? Yeah. Yeah. There we go. I, uh... So, um, where I used to work, uh -huh. um, some of the departments that I worked in dealt with parts that were about the size of a grain of rice. Um, maybe even smaller, actually. And you had to do some very fine-tuned trimming of these parts and depending on the part you would have different levels of magnification um, equipment some of them were just like a normal magnifying glass all the way to um, computerized smart scopes that basically were like um, uh, microscopes, basically. So, with these different levels of microscopes, you got um, closer and closer and closer and closer and closer detail. And if you really wanted to take it further as a, a quality inspector, there was a, a electro um, microscope 
electron microscope in another building to where you see the the structure of the um, crystals in the ceramic and so your picture of down um, it just brings to my mind oh we're getting really 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 focused um, you know into the details right I get it. That's an excellent picture. You probably have seen those things on Facebook where they they take you and you start getting closer and closer and closer, and it shows you, you know, the this is one foot, this is you know one inch. And down, you get closer and closer and closer, going into the quantum realm as gets smaller, and then it turns around the other direction, and you can go out into the cosmos past this. Um, this solar system, this universe, this you know, all this sort of stuff. It just is fascinating to me. Um, it all gets so much more. But to know that in a relationship with God, what does He know? Everything. See, and as soon as we say that, our minds so trip off. We just go, uh, He knows everything, you know. And we just go, What does He really? What does He see in us? Uh, again, have we seen ourselves through His eyes so that we see what He is seeing when He sees us? This is one of our major goals of face to face is to get people to come into a true identity of who they are in Christ, to be face to face with Jesus, to see themselves even more and more. Um, that's, that's our goal. Well, if we aren't expanding our view of the presence of God, if we aren't seeing Him more than we ever have before, how are we going to get other people to see it? How are we going to get others to be part of that? Is, Folks, we've got to ourselves personally all seek His face more and excitingly more and closer and experience Him in us and experience us in Him. Um, Anyway, I get I get all excited, but I, my 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 words quit. It it just fails me, you know. Uh, our prayers have been answered. So, <laughs> my wife just said, "Our prayers have been answered." He's speechless. Okay. Amen. <laughs> well. <laughs> Mark the stink down. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Nah, it's been done before. Well, let me just pray for us, okay? Father God, I do thank you. I thank you so much. Yes, Lord. For what you have done to bring us closer to you. And Lord, we keep doing all this false humility junk about, well, I'm just a just a only a sinner. And Lord, you don't see us that way. You see us as the beauty of who you made us to be. And Lord, we have been afraid to be in your presence because we didn't like the scrutiny. Mm -mm. But Lord, I pray that we would be wanting to have you closer. To know how we can see you better. Yes. And Lord, during this time of... Uh, being away from everybody else. Lord, may we find ourselves closer to you than ever before. Yes, and we give you all the praise and all the glory for it, Lord. Thank, Thank you, you for it. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. 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 See, you went and got me all crazy there. Okay. Um, questions, comments? Questions, comments? It just strikes me. If you want to know what God's will is, get down in His face. Exactly. Getting down in His face is the only way to know His will. I'm also more frustrated with grief. I'm sorry, say that again? I'm more frustrated with grief. You've got all these words for love, all these words for knowledge, now I've got presence to worry about. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> I don't even know what to tell you about that one. Well, if you don't like this one, I don't know what's going to happen when we start the next one, okay? Um, next.
Yeah. Next Sunday, we're starting a series on spiritual authority. So. Ooh. And, and Mike, these are the bigger words. You were you were the listen for most of the ice or the into yeah. part. All the prepositions. Oh yeah, prepositions are huge. That was gonna be crazy. Yes, it will. Hi, Jenny. <laughs> Jenny Loveland, how you doing? I'm good. I'm excited. Me too. Does that make sense today? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions, comments? Amen. May we all be. Okay, we've got the answers, folks. We've got the answers. Listen, no coronavirus can withstand living in His presence. Amen. If we bring His presence into this world, listen, you know what? We're not human anymore. Remember, we're not human. We're beyond that. We're a whole new race. We're a, a priesthood, a royal race. We're a completely different kind of person. Um, they made the coronavirus by mixing a bat virus with HIV to make it human accessibility. Okay? But I'm not human. Therefore, it has no accessibility. We've got something to give these people, okay? Let's, let's take it to them. It's a good idea. You like that stuff? You like that? See? We were taking communion today. And it just, I'm sorry? The believers are contagious. <laughs> we should be. We should be. Yes. What we have in us should be, should be contagious, contagious to everybody around yes. us. Okay. There are on people. <laughs> I, I don't think that's what we're meaning. No. No. <laughs> and they wonder why I worry. Okay, what? That's why, right there. <laughs> strange people. But anyway, the issue is you have a higher frequency and a higher set of bandwidth. You are able to change everything that's around you. As you walk through King Supers, you affect everything there. Don't be affected by it. You change it. Um, I found a thing on Facebook today where they have this UV lamp, handheld UV lights that you can buy and you just pass it over everything. It's a wand. And you just pass it over everything and you just shine the light and it kills all bacteria and viral that's on that surface. Kills it all. Cool. They have these things that they stand and they put them inside a room and it just sets up and it's a great big tall thing and it just shines UV radiation all around the room and the entire room is clean. And it's eyes and tan at the same time. Yes. So I'm sitting here going, oh, that's even in the natural. Now, if we were to shine our light and we have the ability to change things, uh, we should be able to walk in a room and completely sanitize it because of our presence. Because who do we have with us? His presence in every way. Oh. Oh, you, you see, you got me started again. See? I'm not hard to get started again, but it happens. Nope. You're not. That's why we have lee baiting. Lee baiting. Just now. So. <laughs> so that's our, that's your homework is go spend time with the Father and get it. Get Come it. Oh, man. Yep. Oh, word? What's that? Oh, <laughs> Nobody told me there was going to be any homework. <laughs> Wait a minute, we're all at home. That's the only work we can do. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I am a Bible teacher, and teachers give homework. homework. What a concept. All right. So good to see all your f smiling faces. Guys, you just so good to see you. Wish we could do this in person. Yes. Yeah, that would be nice. We'll get there again. So. All right. All right. Well... Then uh, until next time, and for those guys who are in on it tomorrow night, we're hitting yep. it again, 6.30. So how fun. So, All right. And Jenny Loveland, you can tell your husband he can join us Monday night, 6.30.
And if you if you want, just send me a text, and I'll text you back the number, the okay. Zoom number, and he could join us. That'd be fun. Okay, cool. All right. We'll do. Yeah. Thanks, sir. All right. God bless you guys, and I'm going to end this meeting. Send you on your merry way. You be blessed. Thank you. Thank you. Your merry way to be in the presence of God.